I'm not sure. There. Okay, hi, James. Thank you for taking time to be on my YouTube channel. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> I am doing well. Happy to be uh, here today. Weather in Clearwater, Florida is not bad. Can't complain about it today. Yeah, we're doing great up in Minnesota. We have a beautiful day as well. It's nice and cool and about 65 degrees. And the fall is coming and um, the leaves won't be as colorful as they are usually because of we had a major drought this year. So wow. um, they're still going to be colorful. <laughs> well, we are 80 and sunny here in, in Florida. Wow. But I wanted to talk with you because I saw that you um, completed a, like a recipe cookbook. Um, can you share the, the book title? Oh, sure. It's called um, the Kids of Coop's Edition. And who is Coop? Uh, Coop uh, is um, a uh, Dr. Coop uh, who lived in our development. Um, he owned much of the land um, in uh, Cold Spring, where I'm from. And uh, the the nickname uh, of the development came from uh, actually the bus company that picked us up when we were kids. They just nicknamed it Coop's Edition. Um, and uh, so we always referred to it as Coop's Edition. Okay. And what inspired you to make a recipe book? Well, it started out um, like around 2016. Um, my mother had passed away and I had. Uh, made sure I nabbed all her recipe boxes and um, it turned it, it started out as a um, just a family uh, project where I was going to type up um, most of her favorite recipes and I noticed in the um, recipe boxes and and books she always uh, wrote down who they were from in, and a lot of those recipes came from neighbors growing up. They were all, all the parents were around the same age and we had, they all had children about the same time. So they were always recipe swapping and this and that. Um, so I made sure that I wrote in the recipe book who they were from. Um, and then as time went on, we had, um, uh, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, I added more recipes from friends and relatives. And um, uh, soon it was uh, 250 uh, recipes um, around the Cold Spring area uh, by many more than just the people of Coop's edition. And then we had a need um, to, um, we had a need to publish it because uh, my uh, sister became ill and um, we, it turned into uh, a giant fundraiser. So um, that is uh, where all that came from. And then I did add in, in the book uh, stories and memories of um, the uh, neighborhood growing up. And it was, uh, it, it, uh, my hope was to get people to trigger uh, some memories of, of the, uh, you know 60s and 70s so it's kind of yeah cool. yeah that's awesome that's yeah. awesome um who else um now so the recipes that that you got they were from families friends neighbors did you reach out to them um did they just travel word of mouth and people said oh i can give you this recipe or how did that work well, you know how busy people are. <laughs> I do. Um, it, it was uh, a matter of um, the ones, uh, recipes that I didn't have, I, re I reached out down to the final hour of uh, when we were ready to start printing. I was emailing people and I was getting pictures and, and um, uh, just uh, over the phone taking recipes down even. Um, and uh, in fact, the last recipe got in the night before um, they were going to send me the proof. So, <laughs> wow. 
Oh well, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty uh, pretty abrupt uh, printing. <laughs> well, so. it sounds like you you handled it well and didn't leave anybody didn't leave anybody out. Well, I managed to leave a few out, but you know, I just uh, I had to just draw the line and finally just say, <laughs> okay, this is it. <laughs> yeah, we have to we have to put a a, a deadline on there somewhere. Yeah. Um, is there anybody particularly that you want to acknowledge who was supportive to you or contributed uh, anything particular? Um, my my family, um, they they did a lot of um, word of mouth, uh, and that was very helpful. My friend um, Tammy Johannes, she um, she was able to uh, type a few in the. Um, in the computer for for me when I just um, got to a point where I was um, exhausted trying to work and and get recipes in there and and you just kind of have like a stalemate once in a while you just you you know you become weak and you don't want to continue and you picked up where I left off and was able to type up a few for me and that was wonderful so thank you Tammy <laughs> good job Tammy way to be a team player yeah that's awesome so you said you got up to is it 250 recipes total in the book uh 250 yep wow um what kinds of different recipes do you have in the book like and how is it arranged um, the arrangement is pretty standard. It's like uh, breads and rolls and uh, main dishes and uh, desserts is a big one in our area. So we had a lot of, mm -hmm. lot, a lot of desserts. Plus um, adding um, uh, helpful hints, uh, you know, that we use like, um, you know, how to uh, deal with uh, cookies that are dry um. or cutting onions or this or that you know that kind of it's called this and that actually and um it's really cool and then we have uh, conversion tables and and uh, substitute tables um if you're out of this try this and this that kind of thing so what is the trick for onions oh there's a special way to cut them um so it all you know when you cut onions they uh tend to fall apart if you're trying to chop them um when they're together um if you cut right through the root of the uh, bottom of the onion and lay it on its side and a, a half on its side and then cut your slices each way they uh it stays together and you don't have onions flying everywhere so it works really good you can cut them any size so that's i'm really gonna have to keep that in mind for sure um, are there any alternative types of recipes like um, low carb or gluten free? I know you mentioned some substitutions, things like that. Yeah, there are a few in there, um, but it's hard to substitute good cooking. Uh, we had wonderful, wonderful recipes in there from um, um, my grandma, my, uh, you know, uh, my neighbor, um, had their grandparents and great grandparents living next to them. So we even have um, recipes uh, from our neighbor who was uh, who had passed in like 1970. And these were like probably already uh, 80 to 100 years old. So there's some very uh, neat recipes from like um, the 1800s in there too. So it's really, uh, really wide variety. That's amazing. Do you have the um, information there, like who your mom got them from? I think you mentioned that before. Did you keep that with every recipe? Yep, I did. I put um, I That's... put who um, who they got them from. Sometimes I had to guess, and I, I was thinking like who was in my mother's life at that time named Joyce, you know, or or Lorraine or Ma. Who's Ma? It could be my dad's mom because she called. Uh, my grandma, Ma, too. So I had to decide if it was grandma this or grandma that. So it was pretty funny. Well, uh, that's that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I could tell when she always she liked a recipe because the recipe was, uh, um, you know, used so much. It was splattered with old um, batter and this and that. And you know, um, so I, uh, and I remember some of those too, and she made them quite often, so. 
what are your like top three or most frequently made made recipes? Well, I um, I would have to say uh, there's there's a recipe in there called uh, Fantabulous um, Calico Beans. I make that. Uh, we have a very large family, and I make that every time, almost every time. Uh, we get together uh, because we always do potlucks and uh, everybody looks forward to having uh, the calico beans and uh, they're, they're wonderful. I don't even need the recipe, but um, you know, cause it's, you know, burned in my brain um, and uh, people, people love it. It's, it's great. It's got a little bacon in it, hamburger and, mm. and uh, of course a variety of beans and, and uh, a few surprises, so. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. And any others that you, that you favor? Well, I would have to say my mother's uh, frozen blueberry cheesecake dessert. Um, it's wonderful. It's uh, made, it's not baked at all. It's just frozen uh, after you put it together overnight and, um, and sprinkled with uh, graham crackers on the top and, our crumbs. And um, um, I know that when uh, people bring it to our family potlucks, there's never enough to go around because the whole pan is just wiped out. Even when they tried two pans, the two pans were wiped out. So um, in fact, I have some brothers that uh, go for the dessert first so they can get a piece of the blueberry uh, cheesecake. So <laughs> that would be me. Well, yeah. if, it, if there's no baking involved, it's, it might be something even I can make. Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> super, maybe. Super, super easy to make. Awesome. I'm going to look for that one. I remember going to your house where it, I don't remember if it was Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve uh, celebration, and you made an amazing oyster soup and grilled mm -hmm. chicken salad sandwiches. They were awesome. Are, are those in the book? Um, the oyster soup, I did not put in. It's super easy to make. It's just like three or four ingredients. Uh, so that one really didn't make it, make the book, but I'll make sure I send that to you. It's really, you. really, really <laughs> super, super easy to make. <laughs> Either that or I'll show up on New Year's Eve and be like, Hey, I think we also, um, we also served, I remember that, that year you came over, I, I think we served, um, uh, I think with their buddy burgers or buddy, yes. you know, where they were wrapped up in tin foil and, um, a little ham and cheese and, uh, garlic and butter and, uh, poppy seeds. Yes. Uh, and then wrapped in tin foil that, Those were wonderful. And those uh, are, book, so. <laughs> okay. I can look for those. Yeah. Um, do you have any other like cooking traditions that you keep? Cooking traditions. Um, or baking we, traditions? We always um, cook, uh, well, like crab legs and then um, shrimp linguine, uh, that kind of, kind, kind of thing. Um, we do that on birthdays at our house. Um, that's become a, a tradition the last um, seven, eight years now, so. We celebrate with uh, seafood, and that's that's one of them. That uh, sounds amazing. Um, what what or who inspires you to cook or bake? Well, I think my mother. My mother. Um, I was the middle of of eleven, and um, she hadn't. Um, had a whole lot of time to do her own baking. So she trained me in probably by the time I was uh, in fourth or fifth grade and um, cooking for an army of people um, took a, a big load off of her so she could do some of the other stuff that she had to do uh, with, with what we had. And um, the first couple of months, we had a lot of meatloaf. I can say that with with uh, pride, <laughs> meatloaf and baked potatoes. But um, uh, she would she started um, kind of teaching me how to uh, do things um, like on Saturday mornings, um, baking bread, and um, she would whip up um, like uh, she would she would like 
quadruple cookie recipes and make the dough. And then I would spend the entire morning baking uh, cookies. Um, and then we would put them in our Minnesota freezer, or if it was summer, we put them in the regular freezer. So uh, we had ice cream pails full of cookies. So we were never short on desserts and snacks and things like that. So that sounds, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my mom used to make um, pies and she would, she would make them ahead of time and not bake them, but just put the crust and the, and the yep. topping in and then freeze them. And then somebody was coming over, she'd take them out and bake them. So it was like fresh baked. Sure. And we yeah. found um, out that one year um, she went to go get a pie and there was only like one, one piece left. <laughs> and my brother, sorry, Carl, I'm calling you out. My brother had been going in and sneaking and cutting out pieces oh, of, sure. of, of pie and eating them. And, and she was like, they weren't even cooked. And he's like, well, they tasted good. <laughs> <laughs> we, have that, we have that problem with pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. Um, disappear overnight. And it's like, hmm. And then you run into the evidence a few days later, you know, like an empty pie tin or a fork in the empty pie tin. Oh, that, yeah. Or well, the pump <laughs> oh, pump well, pumpkin pie whipped cream are hard to resist. Yeah. Um, is there anything you don't like to cook? Um, don't like to cook. Uh, I would say liver and onions. Oh, I'm right, <laughs> I, yeah. I like, I like liver and onions, but I can't cook it. I just, it's, it just turns me off. It's just the texture and the, the appearance of it. It's, uh, it's, it's just doesn't appeal to me then if I, if I cook it, I don't eat it, but I go over to my sister's house and she makes the best liver and onions in the County. Um, in fact, I put that in uh, the recipe books just for the very few people that do like liver and onions. And that's what we grew up on. You know, we we didn't waste anything and and uh, we had liver and onions quite often. Um, that was my dad's favorite. Um, he uh, he would have the liver and onions and then he would put grape jelly on uh, in a sandwich and put uh, the liver and onions in there, too, for the. I know it sounds really weird, but um, it's kind of a sweet and salty kind of thing. And it was, okay. really, it was really good, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to take your word for that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. So um, I want to go back. You mentioned that um, this was a fundraiser for your sister. Um, originally, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Tell us what was going on. Sure. Um, it's uh, a fundraiser for my sister and my niece and okay. my great nephew, Hayden. Um, they all um, around the same time have had some very difficult things to go through. My sister, um, Betty, was diagnosed with a, a glioblastoma a brain tumor and is very ill from it. Um, and um, it's going through a lot of treatment to uh, slow it down. Uh, so we have some time with her. And um, that one's a hard one. Um, well, they're all hard. Um, my niece, uh, Jen Jenna, about the same time, um, they found that she had a bone tumor in on, the, on her spine. Um, uh, the back of her neck. And so we're doing that for her too. Um, and uh, my nephew, our great nephew, um, Hayden was born prematurely um, at 28 weeks and he uh, oh, wow. was not without uh, complications. So all three of them, um, you know, deserve a little help. And we have a very large circle of friends and family. And uh, if we all pitch in together, we can make, uh, make it uh, a useful time for us because oftentimes you don't feel, you don't feel uh, like you're doing anything or you can help. And there's really no way to help them go through this except for uh, you know financial help and this is a perfect it it, it seems like it was all uh brought together for this purpose and um 
and um, uh, I just they came to my it came to mind right away um, for me to do this, and I'm glad that this is the way I can help them uh, in this time of of uncertainty. Um, so wonderful. Well, I I wish for help and healing for, for all of them. Thank you. So um, it's good to know that, you know, when you buy something that it goes for a, a positive purpose. Yeah. So um, can you show us your book and tell us a little about, about how people can get it? And I, I'm going to put everything in the description below the video, but show us, show us what your book looks like and tell us um, how we can, how we can get it. Okay. So here is my book. I'm, oh, look uh, at that. Turned out really nice. I was very, very proud. And it's like, I'm walking around asking my kids if they know any authors. And I said, well, now you know one. <laughs> so it turned out really nice. Um, uh, Morris Press helped me out in Kearney, Nebraska. And, um, you know, it has a nice title page and um, index. And uh, the recipes are printed very, very nicely um, in the book. Um, nice little uh, custom picture in the front and uh, and just big enough so people over 50 can still read the the uh, text without uh, squinting so perfect <laughs> yeah and there's an order page in the back if you'd want additional ones um, uh, we have a lot of people in our area that still believe in uh, the old fashioned US mail to uh, mail uh, a check, a written check out to uh, me, and um, I'll provide you with my address and things like that. We also do Venmo payments and um, things like that. Um, let's see. Oh, and there is uh, uh, with, with the book. Uh, there comes a um, uh, a version online uh, where you can you you'll get a code and a, a way to get, to pull up the the cookbook online too as well. Um, so that's really neat. And uh, my my house looks like a little factory right now because I'm um, packaging recipe books um, and mailing them out. Um, the UPS man was kind of upset with me because <laughs> uh, he brought, he had to bring um, 12 cases of books uh, to my doorstep at 9 p.m. at night. So <laughs> wow. quite a bit. I was so excited. I was already um, getting ready for bed and laying, laying in bed and I get a knock on the door that it was uh, the, my book. So that kept me up for a couple more hours. I was excited to go through it. It was like, I, I really didn't, I really didn't get really excited about it because it was like you didn't know how it was going to turn out. And no matter how much you proofread something, you are, you're always going to find um, something that you notice and, and um, somebody will probably never notice, but you know, you're, you're always critical, more critical of yourself than others. So um, I found a few of those, but I'm not going to tell you where they are. Good job. Good job. Good job. Well, <laughs> I, I'm excited. I think it's a great project and I really appreciate you taking the time to, to share about it and yeah. uh, we'll um, get this posted hopefully soon so people can uh, order more, uh, more books and I yeah. just appreciate you taking the time. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, thank you, Kelly. Appreciate it. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you too. So Hank, Hang in there. Thanks Thank again. Thank and everybody, you. it's um, James Brinker with the book, The Kids of Coop Edition, um, Amazing Hometown Recipes.